So what's the big deal with 4K? We hear it everywhere now. There's 4K cameras, 4K TVs, 4K on your phone. What does 4K even mean? And should you be shooting with it? Hey everyone, Camber here with you in Alaska and today we're talking about video resolutions and which one you should use for your films. And if you're new here, this channel is all about teaching you how to use your camera to make good videos. So if that's you, consider subscribing. Now when 4K first started getting popular in cameras, people would argue that you don't need to shoot in 4K because no one even has anything to watch it on. But now there's plenty of TVs and monitors that can display 4K footage and do it justice. And 4K footage will even look sharper on smaller screens that aren't 4K compatible. So what is 4K anyways? 4K is a video resolution, or in other words, it's the size of your picture. So the minimum standard for high definition footage, also known as HD, is 720p. And this is 1280 by 720 pixels, giving you just over 920,000 pixels. And the next step up from that is Full HD, also known as 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels, giving you just over 2 million pixels in your image. So the next up in line is Ultra HD, also known as 4K, and this gives you 3840 by 2160 pixels, just under 8.3 million pixels in your image. So the obvious benefit of 4K is that it has way more pixels and will provide a much sharper image. However, just because you shoot in 4K doesn't mean your final product has to be in 4K. If you don't need to export in 4K, you can still shoot in 4K and export in 1080p. But why would you do this? Because this will greatly increase the detail and quality of your footage because you're packing all those extra pixels into a smaller package. So let's say you're editing and you look at a shot that isn't framed quite how you wanted. And since you're using 4K footage in a 1080 timeline, you have four times the amount of pixels so you can crop in and fix the framing to how you want without having any noticeable decrease in quality. However, it would be a bad technique to use this as your go-to because you wanna learn how to frame shots properly, but it is a good fallback in case things don't turn out quite how you thought they would. And aside from cropping your image, you also have the ability to add pans or zooms to your footage in post without any noticeable loss in quality when you're using 4K in a 1080 timeline. Another benefit of shooting in 4K and exporting in 1080 is the ability to stabilize your footage in post when you don't have any choice but to handhold shots. Stabilizing footage in post requires zooming in and then digitally stabilizing the footage. And you can still do all these things if you're shooting at 1080p. However, since you're having to zoom in, your image is gonna start getting softer and look more pixelated the more you zoom in. And the 4K makes it work because you have four times the pixels that you're working with so you can zoom in and still have a clear your picture. Aside from all these editing benefits of 4K, shooting in 4K is a way to future-proof your work if you think there's going to be reason for you to have a higher quality version of that footage. And of course, another benefit of having 4K is the ability to charge more because you are providing a higher quality video. So there are a lot of good benefits to shooting in 4K. However, there are some downsides as well. Shooting 4K for an extended period of time can cause your camera to overheat much quicker than it would if you're shooting at 1080p. You'll also be limited on your frame rate at 4K as compared to 1080p. The a7S II can shoot only 30 frames per second at 4K, but it can do 120 frames per second at 1080. And the GH5 can shoot 60 frames per second at 4K, but it can do 180 frames per second at 1080. Since your files are much bigger at 4K, that's going to require you to have larger memory cards and hard hard drives for storage and backup of your footage. And these larger files will also cause a greater demand on your computer processor and increase your editing time. However, you can always edit with proxy files and then switch back to 4K once your editing is complete. More on that in the future when we get to editing. And finally, exporting times for your 4K project will be greater than they are for 1080p. So overall, remember that story is the most important part of your video. Shooting in 4K will not guarantee that your video is good but it can enhance a good story. And that's all I got for 4K. So if you made it this far, hit that thumbs up. And let me know down below what resolution you prefer to record and edit with. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. And remember that the only way to get better at something is to practice. So get out there and film something. See you soon.